part of this session, we will talk a bit more about how to find the right remedy. The first part was about the general features of the plant kingdom and the context of the interview. Now, we know we are in plant kingdom and as I told you, there are so many remedies in our Materia Medica. What will lead us to the remedy the patient needs? So this is a matter of sub-kingdom, right? It's always the same. First we try to determine the kingdom and then we have to fine-tune to the sub-kingdom and then uh, ideally we find the right species in there. So the sub-kingdom in plant uh, uh, kingdom is, depending on the taxonomy, um, divided in orders, classes and families. And you can use the Wikipedia information for that, you can go to your encyclopedias or you can um, uh, use your homeopathic software because other people already did the research for us. It's not complete yet, it's still a work in progress, I told you. Uh, depending on which system you use, uh, there are about 80 uh, big plant families or groups where there are little families uh, put together and uh, among them there are uh, some 40, 43 I think that Sankaran already studied and gathered in his book that is invaluable in uh, uh, homeopathic use so to find more information on plant kingdoms, insight into plants in three volumes. So how did he proceed? His hypothesis was, is there, I told you, is there, uh, can we find common features in remedies that belong outside of homeopathy to the same group? In order to find an answer to this question, he did a homeopathic uh, computer search. So this evolution in homeopathy was made possible partly because we have these possibilities with the computers to do very quick searches throughout our whole library of um, homeopathic books. If this would, would be done by hand, without the possibilities of, possibilities of a computer, this would take a person half a lifetime. Because we have something like 600, 700 books in English that are used and that are searched by the computer in a seconds. So you can ask anything, look for this particular word or this particular expression or this particular um, uh, remedy in the whole library and you know it will take you a few seconds and you get the answer, which is amazing. So what, Han, what the Sarkaran did, I'm sorry, was um, to ask, to do, this, do a search with the computer uh, to find all the rubrics that have had uh, less than 50 remedies uh, and, um, uh, and a few, the more the better, of the same family. So, for instance, this gave a result that you have a few rubrics or uh, more rubrics uh, of, of five, six, seven remedies of which three of the same family. So then you can conclude that this must be very typical, not only for, for the remedy, but for the whole family, since group members come more than average, uh, much more than average uh, uh, in this group. So they are rep represented, overrepresented. And then he did, uh, how to say, uh, put them in an order. So on top came the rubric, or the few first 10 rubrics, which were most typical for this particular family. And then you can, from these rubrics, pick out the words that are coming up again and again, the words which are repetitive. And this, we understand, is the sensation of the whole family, not those remedies, not limited to those remedies, but the whole family. In most cases, there were more than one um, uh, sensation, more than one word coming up. It's not always the same, but it was a pattern, a group of words or synonyms or uh, a complex of um, related sensations. That's what I can say. This and the opposite. 
it's from the search, the computer search, that we learn that in plant remedies we have the one and the other side of the coin mostly always present. And in some remedies we see one side and in other remedies we see the other and in a lot of remedies we see both. So of this um, search, by this search we could um, uh, there are distilled these sensation words. Hmm? This is, was the first uh, discovery of something like a sensation, a feeling we can say, or an experience that is in the mind and in the body. And in a lot of plants, we only have it in the body. That's why we didn't use the plant remedies so much, because we thought they were not well proven or just a partial picture, as I told you, which is true. But since this, the same uh, uh, sensation shows up in mind and body in the well-proven remedies, we can conclude that this is also the case for lesser proven remedies. So they were used as well. It's not because the picture wasn't complete that they were disregarded. At the contrary, they are uh, considered as very uh, important because the physical sensations are more objective. They are not so much prone to our interpretations. And well-known remedies, very well-known remedies, like a like podium or pulsatilla, or we, where we have a full picture, show that the same things come up in mind and body. Mm -hmm. So these sensation words, and I want to stress this, are actually proving symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's not like a new invention or some fantasy of somebody. Eh? It is the same material as we always used, our classical books, but we did something more with it. Let's say Sankran was the first one who had, uh, who uh, discovered that there is more in it than what we so far used. So this is in a way a big, big step uh, in the evolution of homeopathy. Up to now, as I told you, about 43 I think uh, at this moment 43 families are already listed and sensation words are known and are in the books. These 43 families are, let's say, of course, the, the families we know best, where there are most homeopathic remedies represented, although it sounds like it's only half of the work is done. But in reality, it's a bit more because our well-known remedies are already listed. For instance, um, the Ranunculaceae family, uh, containing well-known remedies uh, like Pulsatilla and Aconitum, Aconite and um, Staphysagria or the Liliacea family with Veratrum, one of our well-known remedies, Lilium Tigrinum, uh, Crocus, Colchicum, Sabadilla and many, many others. Um, the Solanacea family with uh, Belladonna, Stramonium, Hyoscyamus, Dulcamara and many others. The, the Compositae with um, Arnica and, and Calendula and Bellis Perennis. So our well-known, very common daily use remedies are now listed in, brought together in a group um, identity, I could put it that way. So maybe we can give a few examples now. Or maybe just one more thing. We have a sensation in a plant, eh, which is the vital sensation. I told you all levels all of the time, but uh, mostly unaware. And then we have different ways to express this. And in Sankran's book, he calls this active reaction, passive reaction, and um, co uh, compensation. So. I have to explain a little bit what he means by this. It's not limited to plants. Everybody has the sensation itself, the pure sensation, let's say, or the compensation, which is, let's say, the, the, the denial, the, not, the having not the sensation, or the coping up mechanism, the way you live with your sensation, what you do with your sensation. And you have two possible ways to deal with it. One is the successful um, way to uh, fulfill your conditions to be okay. That is what Sankran calls the active reaction. This means that you can do 
you are able to do what you need in order to feel fine, to feel okay with yourself, to live between your limits, but in an okay way. Hmm? So you do this by avoiding particular things that you don't like or you cannot stand or you cannot accept from yourself, accept, or you um, uh, go in the direction where you feel best, what we all do. This is a natural, uh, spontaneous, logical way of dealing with your sensation. That's why the most of our patients say, I used to have this and this problem, but it's much better now. Hmm? And why is it better? It's not better, but as they grow up, as they live with it longer and longer, they learn uh, in which situation they feel good or at their best and in which situation they feel miserable. And of course, as you grow up, you don't go there where you feel miserable. You go the other direction. And that's why you don't feel that bad so often. But it doesn't mean that your vital sensation became less. Not at all. Eh? Um, that is an effect of growing up. Eh? So if you're very afraid to talk in public, eh? if you're when you're in school and when you're a student, it's hard to avoid because you will be asked eh? to talk in front of the class and to make a presentation and, and you will die of fear. Later in life, you won't choose a profession where you have to talk in public because you know you can't do it. You start to stammer, you, you start to shake, you, you, you make a mess. So why would you do this to yourself? Eh? So you don't put yourself in this situation, so you don't feel so often how insecure you are talking in public, for instance. Eh? So that is the active reaction, is doing, being capable, to do, to fulfill your conditions to be okay. The passive reaction in Sankran's uh, terminology means that you fail to do this. You are not capable, you're unable, because there can be all kinds of reasons, but let's say, in general, it takes a lot of energy to be out of harmony, to be disturbed, to 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 manage while you're always between those limits, these demands on yourself, these, these limitations to your freedom. So this takes energy. This makes a person tense. You're always under pressure. You have to do things because you cannot let yourself be careless or free or whatever, eh? because your conditions need to be fulfilled. And at a certain moment, under the stresses of life and the demand, demands and the demands on yourself, there will come a moment that you will produce symptoms, whether the symptoms are on mind or, or on body. Hmm? Your energy is low, your immunity is low under pressure, and if there is then accumulation of stress, probably you will produce symptoms. That's the moment most of the patients see a healer, see a homeopath. And, and they say they're tired and they can't sleep well and they, you know, they have all those disturbing thoughts and, and they don't feel well about themselves and they have a low self-esteem and they don't feel loved enough and they don't feel appreciated and we know all that. So, in general, they're unhappy and they're unhealthy. That's why they're seeing us. So we try to um, discover, to understand, to picture this pattern of the disturbance. We try to match our remedy. And what happens then? There is a stage where the patient goes from the passive state or the failure state to the active state or the successful state. And your patient will be happy. He will thank you and he will say, I'm the same as before. I have my energy back, I'm capable to do this, and I, I can sleep better, and I can perform again. And we should not think the patient is uh, cured then. It's only a stage, because he's still living, acting between his limitations, his conditions to be okay are still there. It is, unless this condition loosens, the patient is not cured. So we know as a homeopath, 
we can do much better and much more for the patient than bring him from this failure state of his sensation into his successful state of his sensation. We can actually try to loosen this corset, this limitation of his sensation and make him feel okay in every situation because he is okay. Eh? The condition to be okay is the disease in itself. That is what we try to, to cure because there is no condition. You, everybody is unconditionally okay. Mm -hmm. Once you, not only as a psychological idea, as a rational concept, you accept this, but you actually feel this, live this, you're healthy. Mm -hmm. So I have to explain this because in the book of Sankaran, I wanted to give you an example. Mm -hmm. Let's say the composite family. He has these four possible expressions of the sensation. So, for instance, he said sensation, this derivation from this computer search in the composite family, gave this result. The sensation is, we know composite family, it's Arnica family, eh? sensation is injured. Mm -hmm. He feels injured, hurt, insulted, which is an injury, or felt as an injury on the psychological level. Eh? He feels he feels he is offended, eh? or he feels uh, somebody uses a rude language or is abusive, and like Camomilla, it does the thing to other people, and he feels people do, do to him. Feeling is shocked, or burned, or scalded, and a fear to be touched, hurt, or approached. We recognize very clearly the symptoms we know from our remedies, but it's a common feeling in the whole family. So the passive reaction we see here, now let's start with the active reaction, that's clearer. The active reaction is touchy, they are touchy, they're hurting others, as I told you, like Camomilla do, does. They can be quite cruel or violent or they strike. And we know this from Camomilla, eh? strikes and throws the doctor out and shouts and, and it uses rude language. So the passive reaction is numb, anesthetic, stupor or catalepsy. So this is all symptoms that he found in our um, uh, rubrics that are repetitive. They come up again and again. So you see the one side is acting, yeah, striking, and the other side is numbing yourself, not feeling that you are hurt, going into a stupor. Yeah? And the compensation is Tough. I'm a tough guy. I can take all the beatings. The beatings is the problem because his sensation is being beaten. And I can take the beating is the compensation. I'm not sensitive to beatings. Protective of others so that they don't get hurt. So this is the conclusion of this derivation and in the books we see the one family after the other where the rubrics come from to which remedy they belong and then what family members share this uh, uh, common feeling of the family now there's something more uh, that we need to determine which particularly fa particular family member we need of this family but then we have to know the miasm and the miasm of the remedy will help us or is the final uh, help to conclude which remedy we need. But that is something for the next session where we will talk in detail about Sankran's idea of miasms and how they are a big help for us in Plant Kingdom. Maybe a few um, general examples of very well-known plant families. So then you have an idea how you can find the sub-kingdom and in this sub-kingdom how then later, uh, next session, with the mice, with the help of the mice, you can find the right remedy. So the composite family is the first example. I already told you the words. It's all about the feeling of being injured. The patient will have this feeling whether he's injured or not. Because if you fall from the stairs or if you have a car accident, then it's normal to feel injured. If you are injured and you feel injured, it's healthy, it's normal and it's appropriate. Then it's not a sensation, 
or it's not a vital sensation. Of course, it's a local sensation, but it's one we can explain very well by the circumstances. So we don't have to cure this with a homeopathic remedy. We have to change the circumstances, which is obvious. If your foot is between the door and, and, and it hurts, then you have to open the door. Then you don't have to take arnica. So if the patient feels something without reason, without explanation in the outside world, without the circumstances explaining it, then it's vital. Then it's not the situation, but it's the patient. And that's a, a, an important um, discernment we make throughout consultation. Is it because of the situation or this means would everybody in this situation logically feel this or is it very typical for the patient because it's individual, strange and peculiar, unexpected, uh, very characteristic. Eh? So the compositive person will feel injured, for instance, somebody says something and it is something unpleasant. There are many ways to react to that. Somebody can feel criticized or looked down upon or feel not loved or feeling alone and protected. And, but a person belonging to the compositive family will feel injured. It is like somebody stabbed him. It's like a wound. Eh? And he will say it's like a wound. It's an open wound or it's, it's, it doesn't heal or I have a scar. Eh? This happened and it left a scar. And it's almost like, like a scar in your body. They can have scars in their soul. And they will tell you. Hmm? Their, their feeling when something happens is being beaten. A feeling of a blow. Because there are many ways to be injured. Hmm? You can be injured by, <laughs> let's say, uh, a scalpel. Hmm? Then it's a, a clean, deep, Cut. But we know this is typical for Staphys agria. The typical injured feeling is like being beaten black and blue. Like, your, um, like a car accident. Of course, you can, there can be bleeding and there can be open wounds, but it's the black and blue feeling. The feeling of somebody hit you. As I gave you the example of the little boy who was afraid of robbers beating him. They can do a lot of things, but he was very much afraid of being beaten. And I recall another case, an Abrotanum case, um, which is a tubercular representative of the composite family. We know Abrotanum as a remedy for children, but this was a 35-year-old man with sweaty hands, and he was sensitive to quarrels, and a lot of people are. They say, I don't like quarrels. I can't stand people having disputes and arguments. And if you question them further, because in the same way you ask the boy with the fear of robbers, tell me more, give me more details, what are you afraid of? In the same way you ask a person who say, I really dislike quarrels, a lot of people do, you have to ask, yeah, what do you dislike in quarrels? Why do you dislike quarrels? What could happen if people quarrel? And as you continue, you can even ask, what does the person feel uh, who is quarreling? And it's an illogical question, but if, if they're building up the image, and you know they're talking about themselves, always everybody talks about themselves, even if they talk of somebody imaginary, then they will say, well, for the person it's, it's very difficult. If they hear these words and, and, and they, they shout to each other, and, they will feel miserable. And if you ask, how, do you, how does the person feel, you will say, like he's beaten up. And then you will think, what? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. The beaten up will come again and again. Or he just was hit in the face, for instance. He will say, it's like a blow in your face. A, a hard word, a rude word, a, a criticism. It's like somebody punches you in the face or in the stomach. And even the physical complaints. Mm -hmm. This boy with his asthma said, my throat feels, it hurts, I have difficulty to breathe in the morning. It's like somebody beat my throat. Isn't that strange eh? to describe asthma in such a way? So this 
fear of injuries, this feeling of being injured, this fear of accidents. They are very afraid of accidents and they are touched by accidents. I mean, not particularly the accidents happen to themselves, but other people having accidents. One, one example I remember is a, a man was almost in tears when he said, oh, I, I'm very sensitive to stories, you know, to sad stories. For instance, I heard about uh, a young couple and the man came with his car in the street and the, the girl, the woman saw him and she ran to him and the car ran over her and she died in his side, before his eyes. And he was, uh, he was all in tears recalling this accident because it was so sad. But the main thing we hear is accidents. And another example he gave was of somebody who had a, a brain stroke and who was completely paralyzed after that. He had only, I think, one finger or one eye movement that he could communicate with, which is very sad, I agree. But again, it is brain stroke, which is composite. It's an accident and it's a bleeding. In session eight, we gained a lot of insight about so-called pain remedies. However, the plant kingdom is very vast and much more remedies are to be explored and categorized. In next session, session 9, we will look into the plant sensation to be stuck. What does this mean in different plant families and how is it expressed in a consultation? Don't miss the video and live seminars of which you'll find a schedule on Anna Varvarkes website.